gonna be bigger than Hell House. More souls for our lake of fire. We are talking Hell House LLC 3, Lake of Fire. This one, once again, is directed and written by uh, Stephen Cognetti, who has pretty much been behind the whole series here. Uh, so before we get into the actual plot of this film, I just want to give you a brief kind of like summary of the Hell House series, in case you have not seen it. So the Hell House is a found footage movie, all well, kind of series now, all focusing on this one particular location called the Abaddon Hotel. So um, the first movie was quite a low budget affair, but was very, very creepy. And then Cognetti actually went back and added a couple more scenes and called it the director's cut, which that actually did improve upon the um, maybe the, some of the kind of the budgetary restraints that the original cut of the kind of the movie had. So the, if you want to see any of these, see the director's cut of the original Hell House. This became a kind of a cult film, and then it spawned, obviously, the second film, uh, which tried to expand on the mythology. Now, I think it's fair to say that the vast majority of people massively prefer the first movie over the second film, and that includes me. Now, I didn't hate the second film. I actually did still think on its own merits it was still a, you know, a, a pretty good um, found footage film. Uh, I don't think it was kind of as kind of visionary as the first one and certainly wasn't as creepy because it tried to kind of expand on the mythology a little bit and kind of it showed a little bit more that's going on as well. So now we have the third movie and um, I was curious to see what direction it would go in. Uh, and it's an interesting kind of trilogy of films because really each kind of episode of this trilogy has a whole new cast but it has the same location. So when you look at trilogies of, of films and stuff, this is fairly unique in that kind of respect because um, it, it does follow a somewhat kind of a, a narrative but with completely different kind of casts uh, for every film uh, but really the location is the kind of the through line here so it's, just, it's pretty interesting it's an interesting idea and uh, makes for a kind of a, you know a narrative thread which I feel is you know intriguing um, so the, the, the plot of this movie is that there is a, the, the hotel was going to be demolished after the, kind of the last movie, but someone has bought it, this kind of rich entrepreneur has bought it, and he wants to do this, and he's some like, uh, like a film and theatre producer, and he wants to do this kind of like this experimental theatre um, play actually in the, in the actual Abaddon Hotel itself, obviously, which in this, in the, um, context of this kind of like series has had all these kind of like deaths and disappearances that have gone on in it. And added to that, you also have this, um, these kind of like uh, documentary filmmakers that are there from this kind of TV series called Mystery Uncovered, which plays into the second movie. So you have the kind of the crew and the, of the, and the cast and crew of this kind of this, this play, and then you have these kind of two um, documentarians from this kind of this TV show. Uh, and then obviously they are preparing for the opening night, and it, again, once again, expands on the kind of the, on the uh, on the actual mythology here without kind of going into too much detail. Obviously, there is um, demonic kind of forces at work here. Supernatural things happen, paranormal um, shenanigans and such. And yeah, so that's kind of where we'll go with the plot of this one. So I've got to say, this is more like the second movie than the first. Um, the first movie relied very well on subtle scares. The second movie changed direction a little, little bit and, 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 a, and a lot, kind of had a little bit more, um, you know, visceral kind of scares, I would say. So what, but let's get on to what works first of all. I've got to say, I thought the acting here was all very good. Across the board, I don't feel like there was any kind of like weak performances. I think all the cast do an excellent job here, first of all, in regard on the acting department. And some of them are kind of like, um, you know, are playing actors within the movie. I thought they did a good job of showing the camaraderie, kind of like this kind of theatre group that would have, um, you know, between them and stuff like that. The guy who plays Russell, who is the kind of the, the entrepreneur, who's this kind of like mysterious kind of guy who may have kind of other connections. 
thought does an excellent job of kind of the figurehead of this and our two kind of investigative reporters as well. I thought, oh, do they all seem realistic in their manner and the way they kind of interact. And I think that's partly the way this was this filmed. It feels very kind of natural, very kind of almost ad lib to a certain degree. But so the dialogue all feels very, very genuine, or at least it feels ad lib because it's, it's so good and well put on screen. There's also one sequence which is particularly scary. And this really reminds me of more what was in the first original movie. And it's really the first kind of like proper um, paranormal sequence we get where we have this girl who um, is dared to go basically down into the basement where there was the original kind of like all the kind of the Satanist stuff was found. And she's kind of dared to go in there alone and touch this kind of like dummy's head and stuff and whilst filming it. And it is a fantastic sequence. Uh, of some truly kind of like subtle horror filmmaking that is genuinely scary. Um, but sadly, the remainder of the movie never kind of does anything like that. That's the one sequence that stands out um, because, of, because of its truly scary nature. But nothing else comes close to that in the, in the movie. The issue with this film, I feel, and it's just very similar to the, to the second film, is it's too busy trying to expand the mythology. And as such, you get a lot of exposition. There's lots of, of people kind of explaining stuff uh, and, and kind of talking through the kind of mythology. And by nature of a found footage movie, obviously you can't have, you know, showing you things that are kind of happening and stuff like that. It's just, it's, it has to be pretty much people explaining stuff. So I felt they've lent too, too heavily into the kind of trying to explain the mythology um, whilst well, the first film, you know, you didn't really know the kind of what was going on and kind of stuff, but it, it lent itself to having it um, a lot more scary, a lot more kind of truly kind of like creepy moments. The other thing is as well, the, the, the scares that we do get, the kind of the, the, the horror stuff, that one sequence is the exception to this. Is it's lots of just kind of people jumping out and and things that are clearly obvious set up. So for example, you have someone in the, in, you know, looking in the camera and then there'll be this big void here. And then you know something's gonna happen. And it's that thing where the light's going on and the light's coming off and there's something gonna be appearing here. It's such an obvious setup for a franchise that really did um, use scare subtly beforehand. I mean, they're okay, but they're just nothing you haven't seen before. It's just very, very kind of like um, typical sort of found footage stuff. You know, and it's the, the, the climax, I've got to say, is, I've got, I've got to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with. It's just people running around uh, in, in kind of like masks and hoods and stuff and um, killing guests. And it just, it lacks the kind of the subtle scares that the first movie had and leans more into what the second movie does. Um, so... It's very much in line with the second film, this movie. Now, because the first film was so strong and I felt had, had did, did such a good job of having you having these kind of scare moments, I've seen some of the kind of like the the negativity towards the second film, and I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be for this one as well. And I don't think it's completely fair because I, I feel that this film still isn't a bad movie and it's still watchable. And it's like I've said, there's some the, the performances are good. Um, it's a great set and, and kind of like location shooting here. And there are a couple of moments that are pretty, t you know, pretty scary and stuff like that. And, you know, it's still it's still not a badly made film, I've got to say. And the kind of like the, the confidence now of directing, you can definitely see the kind of the progression in the kind of the confidence in regard to Cognetti's kind of like direction and stuff like that. So I do not feel this is a bad movie, but it just doesn't live up to the first one. And, and, I, and I feel we'll get a bum rap because of that, but it's still not bad. I, I will still say this is um, a worth a watch, certainly if you've seen the kind of the, the franchise so far. But just don't be expecting the kind of the, um, maybe the, the scary kind of quality that you got in the first movie. Uh, and if I, you know, not that I'm a filmmaker, but if I had to um, give advice, it's just because sometimes bigger isn't always better. Uh, you know, and can it lead into your strengths? And, and I feel that he's that, that Cognetti maybe has taken the wrong message. What worked in the first movie, uh, and kind of and is is a bit like sort of George Lucas in the way that you know it's, he went lent into technology and in this respect that um, you know Cognetti's lent in trying to kind of have all this kind of exhibitions and kind of set up the uh, the mythology when we don't need to know. We just want to have like scary moments. Don't, you don't have to necessarily kind of have. Um, 
uh, all the explanations and, and what's going on and kind of like, you know, Kane from Poltergeist 2 kind of rip off characters and stuff like that. So overall, it's worth a watch, but it is not, it doesn't get up to the, the heady heights of the first movie and is more along the lines of the second one. Anyway, that is a somewhat long-winded review for Hell House um, LL, LLC 3, Lake of Fire, blah, blah, blah. What a long title. Anyway, what do I give this one? I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10, which is what I gave the second movie. I still feel this is an above average found footage movie. And I, I just feel people will kind of unduly be negative about it because it doesn't live up to the first one. But on its own merits, I still feel it is probably um, uh, it's still an above average movie, but just doesn't come close to the first film's um, brilliance of horror. So 6 out of 10, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.